frost or ice. Pressing the heat and defrost buttons at the same time splits the airflow between the heater and defrost to remove moisture from the inside of the windshield. The speed of the system's blower is usually controlled automatically, with the light above the middle button indicating the fan is in the automatic mode. When auto is pressed or a fan speed is selected, the display will show the fan speed and then return to the outside temperature display. When in the auto mode, the button can be pressed to check the selected fan speed. Pressing the auto button automatically keeps air at the selected temperature setting, with the system controlling selection of the best mode and fan speed. The rear defogger and heated outside rear view mirrors are controlled by this button. It works only when the engine is running. Pressing the button warms both the rear window and the outside mirrors for 10 minutes. If additional heating is required, just turn it on again. For 1990, Corvette buyers can select one of the most advanced automotive sound systems available. The Delco Bose Gold Series with compact disc and cassette player combination unit. A bunch of changes to the sound system I see for 90. What's going on there? Well, I think basically the, uh, the major change is, is a Bose Gold system in the up levels. And there are two systems. One would be a cassette only, and the other would be a cassette CD combination, which is the, the uh, highest grade of radio we have. It's a 200 watt system, six speakers, uh, 50 watts per corner, if you will. So it's a complete radio upgrade with a uh, much deeper, richer sound, a much more natural sound, I think, than you're going to experience in the 89 system. And I think it's just part of the evolution of the car. It's just another improvement, another refinement to. Uh, to an already fantastic radio system. Another unique feature of the system is its speed compensated volume control. As speed increases, the system automatically adjusts the volume level upward. Uh, speed compensated volume, in effect, is designed to raise the radio volume based on your vehicle speed to compensate for uh, the, the road noises that you normally associate with driving. Uh, in effect, what you do is you set the volume where you like to hear it at any speed. And in a, the radio will compensate uh, based on changes in vehicle speed to try to maintain that same level. All radio controls are multifunctional. For example, the upper knob turns the system on and off, controls the volume, and tells the time when the ignition is off and the knob is pushed. When the radio is on, Pushing this knob identifies station frequency, and when a cassette is playing, pushing it accesses the reverse side of the tape. The middle knob controls tone. Turning it to the left adds more bass, and to the right, more treble. The lower knob adjusts sound between the front and rear speakers. Turning it to the left increases sound in the front speakers. To the right, adds sound in the rear speakers. On the tune button, up and down arrows indicate directions for AM or FM station tuning. For rapid tuning, first press and hold the button for the direction you wish to tune, and then press the other side of the button at the same time. The auto button causes the radio to seek up or down for stations. Press the auto button and the green indicator above it will light. Now, by pressing the up or down mode of the tune button, it will go to the next station. Push buttons allow for pre-setting of 12 stations, 6 AM and 6 FM. Consult your printed owner's manual for directions on station setting. Also, consult your owner's manual for specifics on cassette and compact disc operations. Corvette coupe models come with a removable roof panel to give owners an open air feel when appropriate. Here's how it works. Side windows should be fully lowered and the ignition key in the lock position. To begin, move both sun visors to the side to uncover the front bolts that secure the removable top. Using the ratchet wrench stored in the center console compartment, loosen the two front attaching bolts. They'll stay in place once they're loosened. Now, move outside the car and, using the ratchet wrench, loosen the two rear attaching bolts on the roof. Now, open the rear hatch lid 
and locate the two storage brackets on each side of the rear area, below the courtesy lights. This is where the roof panel will be stored. Standing at the side of the car, lift up the front of the roof panel. Then move the panel forward as you lift it off the car. Place the roof panel in the rear hatch. Slide the rear corners into the storage brackets and push the panel forward. Now lower the front of the roof panel to the latch pin and pull the latch release toward you, pressing down on the roof panel. Push the latch release forward and ensure it's locked. To reinstall the roof panel, the process basically is reversed. Slide the latch release toward you and lift the front of the roof panel. Pull the roof panel out of the storage brackets and lift it out of the rear hatch. Go to the side of the car and lower the panel onto the car, placing rear guides onto their locating holes. Lower the front of the roof panel and position the front guide pins. Using the ratchet wrench, partially tighten the two rear attaching bolts and start to tighten the front bolts, making sure the bolts are properly threaded into the roof panel. Then. Fully tighten the rear and front attaching bolts. The convertible has been part of Corvette's heritage and continues in 1990. Here's how the convertible operates, beginning with lowering the top. First, lower both windows, turn off the engine, and turn down both sun visors. Unlock the front of the convertible top by turning the latch handles located behind the visors outward. Next, loosen the Velcro strips at the rear of each window opening. Move the back seat forward to locate the rear top release handle and pull it forward. With your left hand, lift and hold the rear of the convertible top while using your right hand to press the button on the storage compartment lid to open it. Fold the convertible top into the storage compartment, making sure the fabric is folded between the top's bows. Turn the latch handles toward the center of the car and close the storage compartment. To raise the top, unlock the storage compartment lid with the button located on either door. Lower the sun visors and move to the rear to raise the storage compartment lid. Reach in, turn the latch handles outward and raise the convertible top. Line up the front of the top with the windshield and latch the front by turning the handles inward and return the sun visors to the up position. Next, fasten the Velcro strip for the headliner at the rear of the window opening on the driver's side. And then lift up the rear bow of the top and latch the storage compartment lid. Line up the rear latch pins on the top with the holes in the lid and latch by pushing down on both corners. To complete the operation, fasten the Velcro buttons at the forward corners of the top fabric. The optional hardtop gives Corvette convertible owners their choice of open air driving or the feel of a closed coupe design. Installation or removal takes approximately 30 minutes and requires two people for proper operation. Two wrenches stored in the center console are used in the operation. A special Torx wrench, shown at the right, and at the left, a flat ratchet wrench. Using the Torx wrench, completely loosen the captive front bolts by inserting the wrench through the access holes above the sun visors. Move both seats forward and remove the rear shelf trim panel. Using the flat ratchet wrench, completely loosen the captive hex bolts located at the rear corner brackets. With the Torx wrench, remove the two lower bolts located on each of the lock pillar brackets. Then remove the single bolt from the bottom flange of each lock pillar bracket. Still using the Torx wrench, remove the two bolts from the receiver brackets on both sides of the car. Now, slide the lock bracket down and forward from the receiver bracket on each side. Disconnect the window defogger connectors 
one on each side, located behind the lock pillar brackets. With one person on each side of the car, gently lift the hard top straight up approximately eight inches and remove it over the rear. Installation of the hard top basically reverses the procedure. The wheel wrench to be used in the tire changing procedure is carried on the floor behind the driver's seat. The wheel lock key that's also required is stored inside the center console. There's a light underneath the carrier that's controlled by the instrument panel dimmer switch. If it's needed, turn the dimmer switch to the full upward position. The spare tire and jack are stored in a carrier tray under the rear end of the car. Use the wheel wrench to lower the tire carrier tray. First, using the socket end of the wrench to turn the latch bolt. Put the hooked end of the wheel wrench into the tray slot and lift it up. Pull the latch bolt toward you to free the rear of the carrier tray. After the latch bolt is free, lower the tire carrier tray using the wheel wrench. Now, pull out the spare tire from the carrier. Detailed instructions for changing a flat tire are included in the printed owner's manual. To store a flat tire, the spare tire carrier first must be adjusted since road tires are larger than the compact spare. To do this, first push the tire carrier tray toward the front of the car. This causes it to drop into the lower position. Then slide the flat road tire onto the tire carrier tray, making sure it's correctly positioned and all the way forward on the tray. Use the wheel wrench to raise the tire carrier tray. Put the hooked end of the wrench into the slot on the tray. Lift the latch bolt and tilt it toward the front of the car, and then drop it down to the lower position. Now, secure the tray with the latch bolt, using the socket end of the wrench to turn the bolt until it's snug. To store the jack, first place it inside its storage bag. Then, remove the tray from the storage compartment behind the passenger seat and place the jack in the compartment. Finally, be sure to return the wheel wrench and the wheel lock key to their proper storage areas. Careful attention to interior and exterior appearance can help ensure Corvette's beauty will retain its showroom luster. For interior care, your Chevrolet dealer has two GM cleaners, a solvent type spot lifter and a foam type powdered cleaner that will clean normal spots and stains very well. Glass should be cleaned often. Using GM glass cleaner or a liquid household glass cleaner to remove tobacco smoke and dust films. The Corvette's transparent removable roof panel is made of acrylic plastic with a special hard coat to resist abrasion. It should be cleaned with GM glass cleaner. Your Corvette should be washed often, avoiding strong soap or chemical detergents. Commercial car washes using hard silicone carbide cleaning brushes should be avoided as they can remove the aluminum wheel's protective coating. Abrasive type air cleaning brushes found in some automatic car washes can also damage the aluminum wheels and conveyor systems may not have enough clearance and can damage the car's undercarriage. We've talked a lot about subsystems of the car. We've talked a lot about details. And for me, it's putting it all together. It's making the vehicle more than the sum of its parts that really counts. And that's what I sense we've, we've really started to accomplish in the Corvette. It is a car that just works all together. And you really sense that out on the road. The car is just working. It's a symphony underneath you.